Humanity sends the first space expedition to Mars, which mysteriously perishes. Rescuers struggle to reach the Red Planet and discover an astonishing find that reveals the secret of the origin of humans and life on Earth. I don't know what the hell we just did. A party is held at the house of astronaut Luke Graham in honor of his departure to Mars. Families of his friends and colleagues gather and the man says goodbye to those staying behind, including his friend Jim McConnell who had long been preparing for this flight but had to leave the project due to his wife's illness. The friends wish Luke a safe flight and remember the deceased woman. She would have been happy that the mission takes place. In 2020, the first manned expedition arrives on the Red Planet. Soon people discover a strange white formation near the base in the Cydonia region, which they suspect is the extrusion of a layer of water which will be useful for future human colonization. Transmitting the news of the find to the command center aboard the International Space Station, four crew members head to the location of the formation for further research. Arriving on site, people see a tall mountain, which radar identifies as metallic. Then the astronauts begin to hear a strange low sound, but they think it's just interference from their Mars rover. And when they increase the power of their equipment, the sand beneath their feet starts to move. At first, this doesn't cause much concern. The astronauts stay in place, examining the mountain, above which a sand whirlwind is growing. But soon, it begins to behave like a sentient being, seemingly examining the newcomers and then attacking them, killing three astronauts within seconds, and then emitting a powerful electromagnetic pulse, destroying most of the working electronics aboard the ship. After the whirlwind subsides, a huge human face carved out of dense material appears from under the layer of sand. The space station receives an unintelligible message from Luke, but they do not understand what happened and whether Luke is alive. The leadership realizes that the rescue expedition needs to be organized, but how this can be done technically is unclear. Then Jim proposes a solution to the problem, as he had developed plans for evacuation from Mars. The station commander agrees to consider it, but opposes Jim's participation in the expedition because the man refused to undergo tests and left the project. Woody Blake insists on including his friend in the crew, as his refusal to go on the first flight was for a good reason. He was very worried about his wife. Moreover, it was he and his wife who studied and designed the flight to Mars. So Jim knows more about this planet than everyone else, which will undoubtedly help in the rescue mission. Hearing his arguments, the commander agrees, and the rescue ship with a team of four people heads to Mars. In addition to Woody and Jim, the crew includes specialist Terry Fisher, Woody's wife, and Phil Olmeyer. Along the way, Jim kindly envies the love between Woody and Terry, observing how tenderly they treat each other. Soon, the surface of Mars becomes visible from the ship, and people note that the expedition camp is intact, and even see three burial mounds next to the building. It is unclear what happened to Luke, maybe there was simply no one to bury him. Soon, a magnetic storm covers the planet, and the astronauts can no longer see anything. Command gives permission to land. Woody goes to share the news with Jim, and catches him watching a family movie, from which it becomes clear that his wife was also an astronaut, and together with her husband, they dreamed of flying to Mars. The ship is preparing to enter orbit around the Red Planet, but then a swarm of micrometeorites appears in its path, and one of the meteorites punctures the hull, injuring Phil's arm. The station begins to lose air, and Woody goes into open space to find and fix the breach. However, the breach is so small that it cannot be visually detected, and then Terry squeezes out juice which floats to the hole and seeps through it, indicating the breach. However, the crew does not notice another breach in the fuel line of one of the main engines. When the engine ignites, the fuel displaced into space explodes, destroying the ship. The crew has no choice but to quickly don their spacesuits and venture out into open space, hoping to maneuver to the supply module left in orbit from the first expedition. They find the module, but it is moving on a lower orbit than theirs, and too fast. Woody uses up all the fuel in his rocket pack to reach the module and secures a rope to it. However, he fails to stop his own flight and continues to fall towards Mars. Terry, wanting to save her husband, detaches her rope and goes after him. But Woody, realizing that if she continues to try to save him, she will face certain death, removes his helmet and perishes. Crying, Terry watches her husband's body fall to the planet and then returns to the others. 
the three astronauts land on the planet using the module. Although the module itself will not be able to take off again, the rescuers brought with them new motherboards for the first expedition ship, replacing the burnt-out ones. Upon arriving at the base of the first expedition, they explore it, but find no one. Although the living quarters are completely intact, Jim goes to the greenhouse and is amazed that all the plants are doing well, everything is functioning and working. The astronaut removes his helmet, and in the reflection on the water, he sees Luke with an axe attacking him, not believing that this is a real person, not a vision. The man is seized, and only then does he begin to believe that they have come for him. The astronauts understand that Luke is not entirely mentally stable as he has spent more than a year on Mars in complete isolation from the world. After recovering from the sandstorm attack, he buried the deceased and began studying the strange structure. He shows the rescue team the video recording of the discovery that cost his crew members their lives, and people are astonished, realizing that they are looking at the face of a humanoid. He then demonstrates his most important find, a recording of the sound he heard near the formation. After several months of analyzing the sound, he understood that it represents a diagram of human DNA on the rectangular coordinate system in space. Someone left it here as their signature. But later, remembering how Phil created the DNA of his ideal lover from candy, Jim realizes that this is not a signature. In reality, it is a peculiar test left by the creators instead of a lock guarding the entrance to somewhere. It turns out that the first expedition perished because they answered incorrectly. Instead of complementing the DNA proving that they were humans, the astronauts directed radar at the face. Since the answer was wrong, the structure's security system, the sandstorm, destroyed the intruders. The team heads to the Sphinx, but first they send a robot and transmit a signal with the supplemented DNA through it. A bright light shines from an entrance that appears in the face. Everyone except Phil, who stays behind to fix the ship, goes to the face. Jim gives Phil the order to take off at a precisely determined time, even if they don't return. Then the people enter a white room, the door closes, and the astronauts lose contact with the ship. Soon, the room fills with Earth's atmosphere, and the people remove their helmets. Immediately behind them, another airlock opens, and upon passing through it, the astronauts find themselves in a dark room, where they see a massive three-dimensional projection of the solar system. Then a hologram of a Martian appears, silently explaining to the people that in the distant past, a massive <laughs> asteroid struck Mars, destroying the planet's ecosystem, which strongly resembled the Earth's. The Martians had to evacuate their race to other star systems, but they also sent a ship from Mars to neighboring Earth containing the seeds of future life. Hundreds of millions of years later, multicellular plants and animals appeared on the planet, and no one could explain how it happened. Many years have passed since this panspermia. The new forms that emerged from the sand DNA evolved and became humans. They were supposed to return home to Mars one day so that the Sphinx would recognize them as the descendants of the grandiose experiment. The hologram reaches out to the Earthling, conveying that they belong to the same species. The Martian hologram disappears, and in front of them opens the hatch of a spaceship, on which someone from them can fly to the new home of the Martians. At this time, Phil unsuccessfully tries to contact his friends and prepares for takeoff. The people hear his warning that the storm is getting stronger and will soon engulf the ship. They realize that they need to hurry, but Jim refuses to return to Earth when the opportunity to fly to another galaxy arises. He is sure that this is an invitation and he was born precisely to reach the new world. Jim says goodbye to his friends. Terry gives him a small rocket pendant to remember, which once belonged to Woody, and the astronauts leave. Meanwhile, Phil repeats the call, but not receiving an answer, he hesitates to press the launch button, and Jim enters a light elevator that lifts him onto the Martian ship. The two remaining astronauts barely make it back to the ship due to the sandstorm, and only because Phil, contrary to the order, delays the takeoff. Meanwhile, Jim steps onto a circle that appears before him and suddenly realizes that he can't move as water rises around him. The man braces himself for drowning and holds his breath, but then he takes a breath and starts breathing underwater. He smiles, understanding that this is a new form of life. Images of his past life flash before his eyes, and the man seems to say goodbye to everyone once again. 
your screw haven't taken off, watches through the porthole as the Martian ship with Jim on board flies away at high speed toward a distant galaxy and wishes him a safe journey. This good, kind-hearted science fiction film that was shot many years ago does not stand out for its dynamic plot, but despite numerous scientific inaccuracies, it is interesting to watch and keeps the tension until the last seconds.